Welcome to this jump. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the missing measure of an angle by solving for x using the angle using an angle bisector. And when we have an angle bisector, um, a lot of times this will be information that we're going to be given. So you might not be able to see on this, but basically I've labeled all of my angles kind of the same, A, B, C. So we're all talking about angle A, B, C. And then the line BZ, which I think should be correct for all of these, the line BC is going to be an angle bisector. And that's usually typically what will happen is you'll be given a problem and they'll say, hey, this line is an angle bisector. So what exactly does that mean? Well, in my previous video, I explained that the angle bisector basically cuts your angle in half. It makes both angles that you create, um, that you create with the angle bisector congruent or equal to one another. So what's helpful about that is now I can basically create um, a station that if I have this larger angle and now I break it up into two similar portions by an angle bisector, those two portions are exactly the same. So therefore, for instance, looking at here, if this, if my angle B or my line BZ is my angle bisector, that means 58 degrees is equal to X or X is equal to 58 degrees. And therefore, there's no other expression to do. That was as easy as that one gets. Now let's kind of work on some ones that might be a little bit more, you know, difficult. So again, we have an angle bisector. And again, a lot of times also you'll see, which actually I originally wrote, here's your original angle. When you have an angle bisector, now those two portions of your angles are equal to each other. So in this case, I can write, here's this angle is 24 degrees. This angle is 4x minus 12. So I can say 24 degrees is equal to 4x minus 12. And therefore, now I can just solve, add 12 to both sides. I get 36 equals 4x. Divide by 4, divide by 4, x equals 9 degrees. Now again, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for what the missing angle is. However, I already know that it's going to be 24, right? Because this one's 24. That means this one also has to be 24. Um, so I can say that the measure of angle, let's actually label these though correctly, a, b, z, is equal to 24 degrees. And let's actually label this one correctly. The measure of angle c, b, z is equal to 58 degrees. OK, well, those two were kind of simple because we knew already one of the angles. And we didn't even really need to solve for x there. You could have just said one angle is 24 degrees. That means the other angle is 24 degrees. But for the rest of these problems, it's not as obvious as far as what is the value of x and therefore what is the value of the, an equation or the angle. But remember, all we got to do is figure out what, this, what the measure is of one angle because the angle bisector we know cuts it in half. So the other angle is going to be exactly the same as well. So let's go ahead and set up our equation. In this case, we have 4x, um, sorry, 4x is equal to 2x plus 20. So in this case, we're just going to get the x's by themselves, so I'll subtract the 2x on both sides. 2x is going to be equal to 20, divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to 10. Then to go ahead and figure out one out, I might as well figure out this angle. That's not too bad, right? So I could say that the measure of angle A, B, Z is equal to 4 times 10 which is equal to 40 degrees, OK? So therefore, if, if the measure of um, ABZ is 40 degrees, then that means the measure of angle CBZ is also equal to 40 degrees, right? Because they're always going to be the same. Um, this one, again, uh, again, angle bisector. So actually, let's go work on this one. So now this one's going to be a little bit more difficult. As you can see, that kind of is a fraction. But Fear not, fractions are not going to make anything anything crazy. So let's just go and set up the equation just like we would have done of any other problem. So I'd have x over 2 plus 17 is equal to x minus 33. Now again, my main thing that I like to do is try to get the variables on the same side. Um, I like to get the variables on the same side, but I don't want to, I want to get rid of this fraction. So one way to get rid of the fraction is just to multiply everything by 2 everything by 2. So by multiplying everything by 2, those that 2 in the denominator divides out. So therefore, I'm left with x plus 2 times 17 is 34 equals 2x minus 2 times 33, which is negative 66. Now I can go ahead and get my variables to the same side. I'm going to get my variables to the right side so I don't have to deal with negatives. So that means I'm going to add a 66, add a 66. So that's 90, so that's 100 equals x. So therefore, you can see that I have x equals 100. Therefore, I can say that the measure of angle CBZ, and you could plug 100 into either one of these. I would probably say that adding into this one would be better than doing the fractions. But we're going to double check our work anyways. Is equal to 100 minus 33. 
And 100 minus 33 is going to equal 67. 67 degrees. Um, bum, 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 bum. So we have is equal to 67 degrees. OK, so let's just make sure we if we did um, 100 divided by 2, that's 50. 50 plus 17, it'd be 67 degrees. So that's perfect as well. So correct. And measure of A, B, C is also equal to 67 degrees. And again, we know they're always going to be the same. Now, the last two problems I wanted to include because these problems happen very often, especially in the geometry course, where we'll get the idea. We're like, all right, I get angle bisectors. But then what will happen is you'll be given something where it's not as free angles. It's a part of a shape. And that's very important because this is going to happen quite a bit when we're dealing with different shapes. You're going to be given a shape and then saying, hey, this line is an angle bisector. So again, what does that angle bisector mean? It just means that those two angles are equal. Okay? And that all, that's all that means. It's just that it's cutting the angles in half. So therefore, your two expressions are now equal to each other. So in this case, I have 4x minus 2 equals 3x plus 18. Go ahead and solve. So I subtract a 3x on both sides. x minus 2 equals 18. Add 2, add 2. x equals 20. Again, you can plug it into any one. I'll plug it into this one. So measure of angle ABZ is equal to 4 times 20 minus 2. 4 times 20 is 80. Minus 2 equals 78 degrees. So therefore, if 1 is 78 degrees, that means I know that my other angle, CBZ, is also equal to 78 degrees. And I can just double check that. 3 times 20 is going to be 60, plus 18 is 17 degrees. Perfect. Uh, last but not least, we have this one. So again, I'll just set up another equation. 4x minus 16 is equal to 2x plus 6. Subtract the 2x on both sides. 2x minus 16 is equal to 6. Add 16, add 16, 2x is equal to uh, 22. Therefore, x is equal to 11 as you divide by 2 on both sides. Now we can just plug that into any angle. And I'll do the measure of angle CBZ is 2 times 11 plus 6. 2 times 11 is 22, plus 6 is 28 degrees. And therefore, if that's 28 degrees, that means my angle, measure my angle A, B, Z is also 28 degrees. And let's just double check that. 4 times 11 is 44, minus 16 would be 28 degrees. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve for your missing variable, as well as find the measure of your angle uh, when given an angle bisector. Thanks.